Right, so Duncan's now joined us. Hi, Duncan. You all right, guys? Yeah, good, good. Just before we start all this, congratulations to you guys, what you're doing. It's awesome. I'm super pumped. I can't wait to follow you on this journey. It's awesome. Well, cool. thanks a lot, man. Right, hi, guys. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, like Duncan said, we are really pumped to be talking to you guys, which is really exciting. And so we're just really thankful that you've given us the opportunity to talk to you guys, find out a little bit about yourselves. So I guess, Jack, maybe we start with you. If you just go around and can, like, tell us a little bit about yourselves, like how you got into barbecue, how long you've been doing it, and just give us a little bit of information about you. And then we just go around and talk to everyone else. Great stuff. Well, I'm Jack Inbracht from South Africa, Pretoria. I've got a company called Smoke and Grind. Do mainly barbecue rubs, fermented smoked chili sauces, private chef work events, big, big smoke barbecue events. We also host a whole bunch of competitions and showcase events, all to do with barbecue smoke in South Africa. We are really trying to grow the sport in South Africa to get it up in our country as big as it is in, in other international countries like the US and Australia and uh, places like that. We've been grinding away, you know. Weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend, we've got events ranging from personal training events, doing stuff at butcheries. Then we've got the big events where you do 150 kilos of meat over a day and a half, growing it in South Africa, seeing if we can we can get this as big as, as in other, other countries. James, do you want to tell us a little about yourself? Look, I'm James Barbecue Grubs, man. Y'all know me from Netflix, American Barbecue Showdown. Gerard reached out to me right after the show and we started talking about barbecue and spices and rubs and we've communicated a lot since then when this opportunity for South Africa to have a team come to meat stock Gerard reached out to me and asked me if I'd be a part of the team and I'm like well how do I get a damn visa you know hell yeah I've been doing this stuff for 40 plus years man I've been hustling raising money selling chicken and gumbo whatever the hell I can up here to get myself to Australia and uh, I'm, I'm telling you I'm humbled as it can be to be part of this team all these guys are great cooks, man. I'm going to try to bring some different flavor profiles with me that uh, they may not have tried yet, that I have spice sponsors and stuff in the States. And then we're going to see what happens. But, man, I think we can well these people. I really do. I, Netflix blessed me by being on that show. I've had a ton of opportunities come my way because of being on that show. Your door's propped open in life to do, take advantage so long. But right now, I got a stick hung up in that son bitch, and I'm going to keep it open as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. Because I love doing what I do, man. I just, I love it. I love barbecuing. <laughs> no better way to meet new people than over a good plate of food. I yeah. live south of the Mason-Dixon line in the United States, and guess what? Barbecue's that food, man. Yeah. And uh, you serve it up, you see the smiles on people's faces, you meet friends, you got new acquaintances. It's it's amazing. Barbecue brings people together, man. It It's more than just cooking food. It's an artistry that brings these people together, and they all have a love and a passion for it, or we wouldn't be doing it together in the first place. I appreciate y'all having me on, man. It's an honor for us, and I think kind of like what you're saying resonates a lot of us because Duncan and I are neighbors, he's even the godfather to one of my kids, so we're pretty tight in that sense, aren't we? Yep. And we've really like connected massively over free, barbecue. Free barbecue, yeah, totally. That's, that's that was the heart of it, yeah. totally. Duncan started, made me really hungry, <laughs> and then um, it just went from there, really. So and now we're obviously both on our YouTube channel journeys, aren't we? Gerald, can I um go over to you then? Just same question yeah. to you. Just as no worries, bit. sir. Thanks for having us uh, in the first place. Yeah, it started very, very early, I think. January last year, all things rolled up for us. It went from spice, uh, place five, which is my spice. Went over to Australia. The organizers saw that and we went from there and then we built a team. And that's where we are at the moment is for the love of Q, which James is part of, Doc is part of. We're five in the team. Yeah, so basically, um, I just got into barbecue because my culture is South African. So I come from South Africa to Australia in 99. And um, we basically just, yeah, we use gas barbecues here, but we didn't like it. And we found some uh, some charcoal cookers and we got into that and I've pretty much been cooking on charcoal ever since I was little. I discovered smoking meat about probably nine years ago, ten years ago, and uh, fell in love with it. And my journey's just been on that. I basically now I my job is smoking meat every day for a shop out in Southwest. I'm in Appen and you know, I love what I do and it's a good journey. It's uh it definitely keeps me on my toes. We probably should have introduced ourselves as well, shouldn't we? So um, I'm Al Mitchell, so my YouTube channel is Big Al's Barbecue. Duncan has his own YouTube channel, which is Brothers of the Grill. 
So this video is going to be on both those channels. It's really amazing that you've given us all that information about yourselves. But, and James, you kind of like touched on this. So really, how did you guys, I know, get on this journey. How did you actually find each other and then decide this is something that you wanted to do together? We just started communicating through Facebook and stuff about different spices and building different spices and, you know, what barbecue was like here, what barbecue was like in South Africa. And that was right after the show, which is a couple of years ago, man. And, uh, you know, it's just been a set of communication following the same stuff. But when he had, he was invited by Jay Beaumont, the founder of Beastock, to put together a team to come compete over there. And he reached out to me. I'm so humbled by it because, I mean, there's a thousand Yanks over here you could reach out to about going to cook barbecue with. You know, we get it off well. When he asked me, I, there was no hesitation on my part. I'm like, hell yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do there. We'll figure that out later. But yeah, no, I'm coming. We're going to do it. Let's do it. Let's win something, man. I mean, I, I ain't coming over there just hanging around a bunch of kangaroos and see what the opera house looks like. Hell, I want to win something, you know what I mean? So that's how it all came about, man. The event that you guys are actually going to, this is one in Sydney, and that's in May, isn't it? And yeah. from what I understand, Meat Stock is basically two days of demonstrations, barbecues, expos, there's live bands there. It's like a massive, massive event. Also, you guys for a game for the competition element as well. What are you guys like hoping to achieve there? From a South African perspective, first of all, we have to learn quite a bit. Learn from James He's in a, the smoking mecca of the world, the US. You know, learn from him and also learn, learn from the guys in Australia. It's so diverse. You look at videos of, of meat stock and the flavor profiles and the methods. It's wild. It's something else. It's not the narrow road and you only do this. You know, they, they're all over the show. Like in the U.S. as well, if you go north, north, south, uh, east and west, there's different flavor profiles, there's different nuances on, you know, where, how you do a brisket and how you do ribs and, you know, this um, state likes this and or region likes this. And Australia is more or less the, the, the same as that. So, you know, eager to learn, number one. Um, number two, and, and bring that back to South Africa, you know, and broaden, because we used to do doing things in, in a certain way. You know, we've got certain prof flavor profiles, we play around, we, you know, um, because the country is so new with uh, the competition side of things, is is quite new, um, you know, in in in, in SA. And um, you know, so so we want to broaden those horizons and really, you know, bring back all the all the experience and all the nuances and the flavors and spices and methods and all that, so we can grow that over year and cultivate that over year as well. And um, you know, really get tighter bands between between the countries, you know, and, and, and create an alliance in South Africa where we can be a three pronged, you know, alliance between US, um, South Africa, and, and, and Australia. Um, you know, includes countries like like uh, South America, places like the UK. You know, to like James said, you know, it's 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 a family. You're building a family, international family. You can call up a, a fellow smoker in the US, and you can fly over and you can. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we can with it, you know. <laughs> we can go over to the UK and we can, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's immediate brotherhood almost, you know, and the, which is fantastic. And then that's what food, the great thing about food. It's a kind of like a quite a big difference. Because I've spoken to a few South African barbecues before, and I, and quite often they're doing kind of like cuts of meat or types of meat that aren't really available or readily available in other countries. Yeah, that yeah. and the flavor profile, are they the biggest differences do you think between like? You know, South African and like US, for example. Yeah, the meat cuts. Um, and also what 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 we've noticed is, I know some meat cuts. The actual cut is is the same, but it's it's called something completely different. Yeah, know? we get that in the UK. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it's the same actual piece of meat, but it's it's if if you if you hear the word what it's called, then you know you would think it's you know from another part of the animal. A cow is a cow. A pig is a pig. They've all got the same it's anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so, Chuck, so the for years Chuck confused me. Yeah, Chuck stays. Try it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The thing with South Africa, especially with the butchers, you know, if you, you go to, to a butcher, yeah, and you ask for for a brisket, you're not going to get the brisket that that barbecue smoking, you know, community is 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 used to. You you get you know a bone in, you get piece of rib, you get you know it's cut in half because that's tradition. That's how meat was cut and that's how the, the butchers you know they they did it a certain way you try to educate them this is how you know the smoking if we talk about brisket this is this is what we want get them educated as well part of this journey to getting getting this whole thing in south africa you know up and running yeah uh, we're all planning to get there five to seven days early to do a couple of practice cooks because william you know he happens to be a butcher and got me so that it's going to suppress stuff to practice with. They're based on KCBS cooking, the Australian Barbecue Alliance. Yeah. 
that's where their rules come from. So when they train their judges, they're training their judges the same way. And so when they're, everybody gets hooked on this big names in the States, Heath Riles, Blues Hog, uh, some of these other ones that are big names in the States that are run at Memphis May or the Jack or some KCBS competition. So that's what, well, hell, that one, that's what I got to use. But the thing is, there's a lot more barbecue than you know, five or six or eight rubs that to do this because it's all about that flavor. And Jock said it before. Gerardo said it. We're going to bring the flavor profile they're not used to. It's going to be awesome. The goal is to get knowledge from all these other guys, Let's share our knowledge, just come up there and do it together as a team and see what we can do. That's the goal. And, uh, but, you know, presentation, plating, and fl flavor profile, because it's going to be what puts us over the top because everybody there is a good cook. But that, that's the great you know? thing about you guys getting together with your different flavors and ways of cooking and techniques and that <laughs> and getting the best of all your ideas together. Like you say, you're going to get together a week early. You're going to, you know, you got some flavors going on. You got the other guys have got some other flavors that are not necessarily blues hog or this or that rub. They're pretty basic stuff, but right. the, the profile works really well. You're going to explode. I can see it. I really can. I mean, I've, I've helped some teams professionally and there's also tricks you can do plating you know, to get your kale and stuff in the box lined up right. And a lot of people don't know about or don't do it. I don't know if they do it. They're not putting, you know, getting your box plated with your greens in it and then putting another box on top of it with a weight to get all that stuff to sit out and spread out in that box. You might want to use red kale in there instead of green kale because of the color of the meat and the color of the box to put it all together. You know what I'm saying? So, because all that has a difference, the color of the product, the color of the greens, the color of the box, that's going to be your your visual when you open that box. And it's just going to be a little different than what we're used to. Than what I'm used to. And what these guys in South Africa are doing their bride, they're probably a little different than what they're used to. What's the best way to cook a brisket? Man, I don't know the best way. I'm going to tell you how I do it. Yeah. But I know that two, you can take two briskets side by side from the same place, and they're going to break loose at different temperatures at different times. So it's done when it's done. You know, when you feel it and you know that feel because you've been doing it for 30, 40 years, you got that probe. You, you pick up that rack of ribs and that sucker's slagging like you want it to slag. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what the temperature is. I know it's done. And so, you know, it's just different, man. It's, it's true what you're saying there because i got a very good friend who's in Ohio. And we do video chats quite often. And it, it's great because it's for the love of barbecue always. I met him through Jack Daniels Collecting. That's something else I do, but that's not part of this anyway. But I met him through Jack Daniels Collecting. Turned out he was into barbecue. He's from the other side of the world. With video chatting, I'm, I'm trimming a brisket one night, and he's like, what are you doing to that brisket? I'm like, well, I'm just trimming this off, trimming that off. I wasn't going full on, like, you know, competition style. But he's like, man, leave it alone. Just cook it as it is. It will shrink down, and it'll be good. And I learned off him. That's right. And I did it. And I, like, just like you said earlier, you learn from each other. You've learned stuff off me. It's like ribs as well. You know, back in the day, I used to be like, right, let's go. YouTube, three, two, one method. Right, I'm going to do a rack of ribs, six hours. Oh, my Lord. No, you can get them done in two and a half hours. And they're just the same. It's the technique. Wrap them when you got to. Have them fall off the bone if you want to or bite. You know, you can have them done in two, three hours, not six hours. You know, it's... Yeah. I, know, I, I cook professional. I cook where to three hours. You know, that's me. I, give me three hours. I can give you a competition rib in a box in three yeah. hours. You know, not, not being funny. If you've got friends around and you're relaxed and you've got all day to cook, yeah, do them low and slow, six hours, have a few beers and a chat, and they're done. Or if you've got friends turning up at six o'clock in the evening and you're running around at 12, you'll get them done yeah. quicker. You, there's just different ways of doing it. And not everyone knows mm -hmm. that. that's what it's all about to share that knowledge as well. And that's, you know, another part of it, like you say, it's, it's the love of barbecue, sharing with each other. Right. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like James, one thing that James said, and we've noticed very much in the UK, is wood. So, for example, we use oak, cherry, um, apple, if we can get it, but they're the main like ones that we're really going to use. So in South Africa, I know, because I use Big K, which is a um, charcoal brand, but they use a lot of wood that is South African. Now it's called a bush. I can't remember the name of it now, or the actual wood they use, but it's specific ones. So do you reckon what wood do they're they going to use in in Australia? Is it going to be oak again? Do you know what they're going to use? Post oak or 
Did our post oak in Australia? I don't even know, to be honest, because we don't get post oak. No, no. The the type of smoke, um, you know, smoke wood that, that we use in South Africa is is, is oak. Um, you know, mainly mainly oak, but we we get a variety of you know uh, from guava to pecan, macadamia, uh, cherry, peach, apple, you know, citrus woods. Um, you know, we've we've we're fortunate enough to have a you know quite a big variety of, of smoke wood. You know, and then then we've got the South African you know uh, indigenous um, you know woods as well, uh, camel thorn and I don't know what's it in English, but roik roikrans. Um, you know, it's 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 quite heavy heavy woods, and we've got a um, you know it, it's got a different flavor to to you know something like like cherry or oak or you know um, stuff. They they fall more to the hickory and mesquite type of um, hardness of, of, of the smoke, the indigenous woods. But then you also get the, um, you know, as I said, the, the normal woods, the cherries and the peach and apple and stuff, you know, which you all know. But I've actually, you know, thought the other day we were doing a cook through the night and, you know, through the night you, you know, sit there, have a few and, you know, philosophy, you know, you, they see you, you, you think of myriad of things. So what, what we thought about was, we should maybe see, um, you know, in, in future when we come back now from each stuff, if we can maybe, you know, get some um, uh, cherry wood, for instance, you know, choose choose one and, and do cherry, you know, get cherry from Australia, get cherry from the US, get cherry from, you know, a place like the UK and from South Africa and do four cooks with the same cut of meat, same process, the same wood, but from different countries and see if there's any flavor profile difference, you know, and yeah, fuck, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Is something I've not seen done before. You know, yeah, yeah. it would be interesting as well. I'd be interested because, hmm. you know, through the different countries and that, you know, you got grass fed, you know, grain fed yeah. with, with the protein itself, the differences in flavor from different countries. And it's the same, yeah. like, same woods and stuff like that. And it'd be you interesting. The, 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 whole thought be, the whole thought behind it was, you know, you get different, different soil, chemicals in the soil, um, yeah. you know, different chemicals in the rain, different um, stuff in the air, you know, ambient, ambient air in the whatever particles and stuff that's in there. You know, cherry is a cherry is a cherry and a peach is a peach, you know, but yep. but the, the actual, because we're extracting the, the the actual flavor and the essence of the wood, you know, if that, you know, those things will play a part in, in, in you know, having different flavor profiles, I'll bait ever so slightly, you know. So that's that's one thing that, that you guys can you guys can keep an eye out from, you know, yeah, yeah. when, when, when oh, we, we're back. We can we can send you the wood from the UK, no problem. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> so you can do that. your test. We're happy to get involved in that one. <laughs> yeah. So when you're at meat stock, do you know what actual smoker you're using? Is it one that William's turning up with or well he this is what I know about it that we're going to use drum smokers, UDS drum smokers, pellet grill, and a not reverse level direct, you know, wood fired stick burners. So yeah. you know. Play the show where we cooked on all these different cookers, and you just got to go with it, man. That's that's all. That's all part of the journey. And as you say, you know, woods woods a living thing. The soil it grows in is living thing. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's all part of it, right? And it's going to take on a different flavor. But that's why we're all coming together and do it. We're going to share this knowledge. We're going to cook some meat, and we're going to see what works out fine. The goal is to be placed in the top ten at each top city for the brand new team. That's my goal in my brain. They definitely. Our other teammates, George Berta from Big George Custom Smokers, you know, he's got a wealth of knowledge, um, you know, with, with the spices yeah. and, you know, methods and because he understands the smoker, he builds them. Uh, William Plot in, in Australia, I mean, he's, 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 a, he's a meat slinger extraordinaire, you know. He does it for a, that's his graft. He does a lot, you know, quite, quite a bit. That's his graft, as I said. So, um, you know, the, and with, with James, with, you know, what, what he does and the amount and the years of experience, like James said, you know, we've, we've got a cracker team that, you know, brings so much to the table, um, you know, from, from methods to, um, you know, the smoker, to the flavor profiles, to the, you know, there's just so much information and experience between all of us. Um, you know, we, I think we're going we're gonna to rock the socks off. <laughs> you put that perfectly, but I could probably top that you've got a hell of a lot of passion that's just going to mold together. That's what I'm seeing yeah. right now. Yeah. Literally, I'm saying it as I see it. And you're saying it as we feel it. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're saying yeah. it as we feel it. If I could make a living out of cooking what I yeah. love doing, that's me. I'd love to. Yeah. You You'll know, never work in a day. That's my dream, to be mm. cooking for a living. But being, oh, 
you're doing something you love, yeah. then it's not a job, is no, it? No, exactly. Just, you're just yeah. lucky. We can't wait to see more of what's to come, basically. Yeah, this yeah. is just a lead up. This is like, I'm, yeah. I'm probably just as excited about it as you guys. I'm, I'm not even going. Tell us. Tell us. <laughs> well, we've, we've, yeah, yeah. Well, well, tell us. Yeah. Go. <laughs> we've, we've set up a website to get things going and, and keep people updated on, on the, um, you know, uh, progress and all that and, and as we go on we'll, yeah. we'll upload from that side we'll leave links in this video yeah, down below so, yeah. for everyone to connect with you guys yeah, yeah. there's profiles of all the team team members um you know photos what we do where we do it um podcasts that we've done links to that and then also browsing photos of, of, of what we do um you know as i said the youtube channel the, the whole thing just to you know Give people from the outside, wherever they are, you know, just an insight of what we are doing and, and how it's progressing and, and where we are at the moment. It's been fantastic talking to you guys. A real privilege and an honor for both of us. Totally. Um, we Thank wish you the absolute best of luck. Um, we hope you blow them away. Um, I'd rather do what you're doing and, you know, go nowhere and actually not win and actually be true to yourself. Have a really amazing uh, you know, you guys are going to be friends for life. There's no two ways about it. I'd rather do that than any performance or anything like that. So I honestly, both of us wish you the absolute best of luck. Um, we're we'll obviously trying to uh, hook up on the live stream to see if we can get that working as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, like I said, we'll post everything down below so people, I hope, will um, you know get to experience your passion as you're going through that mixed up journey. But I think for us, I think it's just time to... Yeah, uh, and you know you're going to have to have us back. When we go over there and win some shit, you're going to have to have us back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know that. I mean... 100%. Counting on it. Well yeah. said, James. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. From Hell our side, yeah. uh, we're not lacking or whatever. We're going for the top points. Um, we get a good team. And I thank you guys for having us. Um, but yeah, like James said, we're going to be back. We're going to be back. You're going to hear yeah. from for the love of you for a long time. For you can't doubt about that. Well, Thank you, sir. Well, guys, have a blessed journey. Um, we wish you all the yeah. luck. And we will catch up with you real soon. Right? We're, we're following you, and we hope that our friends and family follow you as well. Because yes. it's, it's so a we'll, we'll journey. Do, we'll do a live show for you, for, for you guys on Sydney. I yeah. think Dark wants to say something the last time. Yeah, no. Thanks really for the opportunity. Um, you know, for, for people, you know, it, it's, it's guys like you that, you know, spread this um, love of barbecue all over the world, you know, um, you know, on the internet and, you know, on YouTube. And, you know, that's that's also playing a very, very big part, um, you know, to everybody that, that, that does it. And, um, you know, really so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you're very Thank welcome. Thank you. We we can't yeah. we can't wait to do the second part of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, for, nice. There's a lot for the baby for for the love of you. I oh, even got the tattoo on my leg. I'm all in, man. Hey, oh, yeah. hey I'm getting a meat, I'm getting a meat stuck tattoo next week. So that's, that's boom, my daughter's a tattoo artist. Yeah, I'm that's all in, like baby. Love. He's got into it. Hey, Duncan and now here's to you, Duncan and now both to you, man. Cheers, Cheers, brothers. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for thank having us. And my, and my fellas, I'm going to meet you soon. Jot and Gerard, everybody, I'm going to meet y'all soon, brother. It won't be a couple of weeks. We'll be there. Yeah, yeah it's going to be awesome, man. Take care, and we'll speak to you really soon. Cheers, cool. guys. See you when I see you. Cheers, brother. Cheers. For the love of Q.